Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hi, this is Cynthia Lockery, and welcome to Canada's podcast, where we talk to entrepreneurs who are making it happen right here in BC. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Gita. As someone who loves the outdoors, problem solving, and helping others, Gita started Campertunity, which is like Airbnb, but for camping. She endeavors to make the outdoors easily accessible to everyone. Okay, this is going to be a good conversation. There's a few of us here that love to camp, but, you know, might want a little bit easier experience. So why don't we start by you um, telling us about yourself and your organization? Sure. Thanks, Cynthia. Thanks for having me on Canada's podcast. It's a real pleasure. It's very exciting. So yes, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Campertunity, which is like the Airbnb of camping. So we are a website that invites landowners to list their land for campers to book for short-term stay. So we are solving the problem of there being way too many campers and not enough campsites. So I'm going to rewind a little bit, a little bit about me. Uh, born and raised in North Vancouver, I graduated from Simon Fraser University with a degree in general arts, and I got into tourism right away, and I just simply loved it. There's nothing more satisfying than showing off your city, your country, your province to the rest of the world, and I have a real, a real passion for that. I'm also coincidentally really into real estate as an investor, so I just kind of feel like my whole background all tangled up was kind of a perfect segue into Campertunity, which kind of popped in as an idea back in, in 2016 when I went camping. So I am an, I love the outdoors. One of my favorite things to do is hiking, biking, especially dragon boating, very much a Vancouver sport. So in 2016, a group of friends and I Decided to go camping just outside of Pemberton. And it was about the second day in when I finally said, where are we? Are we at a campsite? What is this place that we're camping on? It was an organized event. So it was on, it turns out it was on private property and it was very beautiful. It had a lakefront with mountains in the background and a waterfall on the other side. And I thought, wow, this is really gorgeous. It's very spacious. It was perfect. It was one of the most memorable weekends I've ever had. And a few months later, my co-founder, Nora, a Campertunity, and I went camping. And it, this time I was at a provincial park, and it was a much different experience. It was crowded. Uh, our our plot was a gravel plot with like this nine by nine space just for our tent. Uh, and it was like five in the morning, the RVs are going by, and people are rushing for the bathrooms. It just felt like, oh my goodness, I'm in my pajamas. I didn't want to get out of my tent. Everyone's going to see me. And it just felt like, hmm, you know, I think we need more options here. Mm -hmm. And so that was the birth of Campertunity. And it was just, for me, it was my one of my first ventures into entrepreneurship. I've, I've done some entrepreneur work before uh, as well. Laura and I had started some previous companies. But Campertunity was the one that was the most promising. So when we thought of the idea, we just dove right into it. We have the right background for it. And so here we are today. Wow, that's so great. And I know, good luck getting a campsite in a provincial park unless you're sitting on the button hitting the booking. So okay. I love that you're opening up these opportunities. Um, in terms of uh, working as an entrepreneur, is there any job that you had? I know you said you had some background in tourism, but is there anything that that kind of made you feel prepared for being your own boss? <laughs> um, you know, there's some freedom that comes with being your own boss. So I think I was ready for that in this stage of my life for me to decide, hey, this is when I should take a vacation and this is when I should do this and this. So, I mean, I think it just comes naturally that we all like to have our own freedom. But, you know, when I was, I was, when I started Campertunity, I wasn't thinking, I want to be my own boss. I want to be an entrepreneur. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking, there's a problem and I have a burning desire to solve it. That was my drive. That was my passion. I really didn't think what would come of it entirely other than I need to help. I need to help solve this. 
And so that's what was mostly on my mind. I love that. And I love it's like it really is about a problem that's out there. And you you have the insight and the ideas and, and what I'm hearing is the passion to move forward. So is there any um, insights or, or little nuggets or knowledge about your particular industry that might be of interest to listeners? I did a little bit of Google research on this one, I have to be honest, because the campsite booking industry is massive. And I just love it. I love sharing this number that in the recent years, 7.2 million people, households, not even people, households, sorry, have engaged in some sort of camping activity. So that's like more than all of British Columbia. So it just goes to show how much we're needing the outdoors and how much we love it and we want to be in that space. Hmm. Well, and since COVID, I think people people are wanting to have a little bit more space and and enjoy that versus all being together. Absolutely. So, what are you most proud of in terms of the work that you do? It, it is again tied back to that helping campers get outside, helping them have this other option to get outdoors. We know that. Nature is good for us mentally and physically and being able to provide something where people with anxiety and depression or just need to a break that they can easily get that break. And that's what the camp opportunity is all about. It's, it's we're all about an easy process of search, browse and book to find a perfect campsite. It was about maybe three years ago that I went to visit one of our hosts, our camp opportunity hosts on Vancouver Island. And once in a while, whenever I can, I try to get out and meet as many hosts and ca- even campers as pro- possible. And so we met, went and visited this host and it was this beautiful farm. And she had pigs and goats on the farm. And I got to pet a pig. And it was the first time in my life that I had pet a pig as an adult. Like this is the first time. And I was so excited. And I got to learn about these goats and the goats were just following us around as we were touring the farm. They're almost like dogs, like their personality is a little bit so friendly. And and it was just such a great experience for me. And I thought, wow, like imagine kids experiencing this. They would be overjoyed or, you know, other people visiting Canada or even just people who are used to our small condos and our urban life setting to just get out and visit these animals. A lot of our hosts are farmers and ranchers. And I think that to me is something that's really proud is giving this experience back to people or or letting them engage in this kind of experience. And that's really what's on the camper side. Now you have this whole other side, which is the host. And every week we pay our hosts, you know, they have campers, they get their money. And when I'm looking at the numbers that they're collecting, I almost feel a little jealous. <laughs> I think, wow, I wish I owned property. Like we have hosts that are raking in thousands of dollars every month. And it's just really satisfying to know that they're able to sustain their land. They can pay their taxes. They can um, continue to grow food again, because some of them are ranchers and farmers. So it keeps our food local and less dependent on import. And it's healthier to eat local food. So there's just all these kind of ripple effects that are happening. And I mean, all of that together makes me know that this is right. Now, if you have someone's listening right now and is thinking, "Mm, I think I want to be an entrepreneur and take that leap. Is there any advice as somebody who's taken the leap that you would give? Yeah, I, I have plenty of advice. Be prepared to hustle. That's my that's my number one. Like this is a tough job, and I I remember when my son was born. My son was born on a Saturday, and I was pitching on the Wednesday, on the next Wednesday. So yeah, and thankfully it was virtual, <laughs> so no one could tell that I had just given birth. But uh, it's that kind of hustle. Like there's something going on. You got to do it. And that's that's a part of business. It's kind of, it is kind of like your other baby and you really have to grow it. You have to be there for it. 
you have to wear various hats. You know, one day I'm marketing or even one minute I'm marketing. The next day I'm doing a podcast. The next day I'm writing for a grant. And it's just all these different types of things you got to do. I would also big advice is if you are starting a tech company, get a tech founder because Mm -hmm. very expensive to have a website or anything techy unless you have a tech person on your team. So we kind of learned that the hard way when we started Camp Opportunity. It was very expensive, but now we have a CTO, a chief technical officer on our team. And wow, we were able to relaunch the website this year and it's been like night and day. So I think also market validation. I, I, I sometimes hear people come up with an idea and I mean, it, it sounds like a nice idea, but really, is there a market for it? You don't want to start something because you think that it's a great idea and it's product that you want. But are there other people who want it? And we have, we're have we talking about millions. Like there has to be, it has to be like a million billion dollar industry for to really pick up. So I would say like really do your market validation and I guess um, be be committed, go easy on yourself. I, I'd say like be gentle. Um, you know, I say hustle, but also be kind to you. Always remember to be kind to you. Don't let things like age get in your way. Or if you think like, well, I have this many kids, I can't possibly like you'd be surprised. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are older, who have children, who have mortgages. So if if everything is lined up properly, go for it. I love that. That's such great advice. And let's talk about being based in BC. So we're both based on the beautiful West Coast. What do you see are some of the benefits of having a business based in BC? Uh, For me, some of the benefits, and I guess a business, and for me being based in BC is, is I can really empathize with what's going on. I can really get a sense of how important nature is. I can get a sense of the, the pain points of trying to get into nature, to try to book a campsite, to really understand that. It really resonates for me. Uh, you know, camping is also a low cost vacation option and it's eco friendly. And I can really understand what it's like to have debt and what it's like to have the cost of living here in Vancouver, especially to be so difficult and wanting to continue to create a solution for that. So just being in BC, being in Vancouver, it's expensive. So Campertunity, you know, we try to keep encourage our hosts to keep the prices low so that people can afford these things. Because I know what it's like and you feel that pain too. And so I'm actually living in it as well. So that's, that's one of the big benefits of it. And also just being here in, in BC, it's just, you know, this is the best place on earth. <laughs> So having being surrounded by this nature just really it's a it's a good motivator and it makes you really feel like wow we like we should share this we should really take advantage of this and love it and appreciate it and be in it as much as possible. Now, what are some of the challenges of of running a business um in BC because there's always the the other side of the coin. Yes, yeah, there there, there definitely is. And The other side of the coin is an unfortunate one. I feel like, especially the last few years, in a nutshell, it's the fires. This is, this is a massive global problem. It is huge for humanity. This should be given 100% of our attention that the world is on fire. That's at the macro level. The micro level, obviously, it affects camping in Vancouver and BC. We have maybe four months of sunshine out of the year where we're like, hooray, and we all like to run outside and enjoy the sun. When we have these fires, it, you can't, you're limited again to the indoors. You can't smell this, you know, you can't be out there. And it's just tough where we don't understand what the effects of this will be in, in 20 years from now, uh, the, fi- the fires on our lungs. So it's definitely, it's definitely a challenge that way. On, on that aspect of it. And I would say a secondary challenge is just being in BC, being in Canada is it almost feels like our funding is a little bit more limited mm. than we have in the US. I feel like in the US people are throwing money around like it's just uh, capitalism gone crazy and there's a lot of investment into businesses. 
our competitors are from Silicon Valley, where there's m- millions and millions of dollars being pumped in. And Canada is, in good ways and bad ways, simply a little bit more conservative on that end. Yeah, and that's definitely something I've heard from other guests on this show is is that challenge or a smaller market share. Exactly. So you live in North Vancouver, so you're in an urban area, which sometimes can be easy for networking, but also can be overwhelming. So if you had somebody who was moving to your community and wanted to get a foothold, is there any advice that you would give? Yeah, and this really helped me when I first got started. I would say go visit Small Business BC. They are a fantastic resource. You can look them up on the internet, but they have tons of information. I was in and out of their offices so much that they got to know me. And they're just a great starting point. They have courses, they have their personal advisors, and it's just a wonderful starting point. Networking events, yeah, you're right. They, they can be overwhelming. So I think you got to pick and choose which ones you want to go to because your time is precious. Use it wisely. And so I tend to go to events if I kind of get an idea of who else is going to be there or who are the guest speakers or how will this benefit me? Do I need this at this time? So usually when I go to do a raise, I'll ramp up my networking a little bit more. So that's what I would say as my advice. That's a great. Now let's talk about successes and unfortunately failures um, or challenges, not failures. So how do you define success? But more importantly, how do you take the time to celebrate? I define a success if I'm able to sleep well at night. If I can sleep through the night, if I don't go to bed with something on my mind that's causing some sort of panic or anxiety, then I know I had a good day. Things are smooth. So that's how I define that. I also like to kind of plan something for the end of my week. So I'll say to myself, if I get through this many tasks that I got to do, then um, I'll go, I'll go have a nice dinner. I'll plan a dinner with my family or something. And it also gives me something to look forward to because a lot of the tasks that we do do, quite frankly, aren't fun. And and I can tell you, like, for example, trying to write a grant for a a government grant application is so incredibly painful Mm -hmm. that you have to set up these little markers for yourself saying, okay, I'm going to get through this. This is how I will reward myself. And it can even sometimes for me, it's just like, I'm going to watch a movie on Netflix. I'm going to give myself that time to just decompress. And yeah, successes are often always, um, I should say, are often things that I can also brag, <laughs> brag to my friends about. I can say, hey, this happened. So that's how I know it's a success too. I can verbally say, yeah, this is great. This happened. And so we get these bumps in the road and challenges. Um, as entrepreneurs, how do you navigate those? That's why I have a co-founder. <laughs> That's why it's great to have a co-founder. There's always going to be these days where you're like, oh, like you feel like you're in a slump. And I've certainly had those days. I've gone to my co-founder, Nora, and I said, you know what? I give up. I throw my hands in the air. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. And she's like, wait a minute. Okay, let's talk about this. And she brings me down. And and there are some days where, she, you know, Nora's not as often, but there's some days where she might feel that way too. And I, you know, we talk about it, say, well, this is, this is what the problem is. This is what we can get through it. So it's always great to have somebody else who's on the team who knows the way you work and who knows the business as, as well as you do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I feel like there's also a lot of times this fear that gets in the way, even when, opportunity the website was built I and mean, it was ready to launch all i had to do is like a press of a button like i'm sending a rocket off into space like that's what i had to do to launch this website and there's this moment of oh my goodness do i know what i'm doing like panic panic and then you know you just do it right. just do it don't let that fear get in your way fear is i think one of the worst blockers of anything in life like just go for it yeah such good yeah. advice. And I was reading something the other day that that the challenges we have are always growth opportunities. And if we look at how 
we grow and changes, they all usually happen from a challenge. So let's talk about uh, one challenge. We've had COVID. So that's changed your organization. So what do you, what's your goal as an entrepreneur for the next five years? Where do you want to be? I would love it if Campertunity is synonymous with camping in Canada. I want us to totally take over this market and be the top campsite booking website in Canada. We're a Canadian company. We've been here for the past few years. We're growing. It just makes sense that we cater to our, our, our country. Beyond that, I would just love to go global. I would love to be outside of Canada, get into other countries, expand. You know, there's camping is, is a global phenomenon. Like people everywhere want to go camping. It's not just here. We just happen to have one of my favorite pieces of nature. And also a, a team. It'd be nice to have a team. It's, it is a lot of work being um, an entrepreneur and our t- we, we have a team, but it's relatively small. If we're going to grow, it'd be great to grow that team as well. And I always say one of my major goals is to be as annoying as possible to our competitors. I just want to annoy them so much. And ultimately, I would love a merger or an acquisition. But the goal is at this moment is to just grow, grow, grow. Love it. So... um what routines have you, have you done any routines? You're a mom. I'm a mom. <laughs> Some of the routines that people recommend do not work for us. Like start your day with meditation where <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is not happening. happening. Is there any routines that do help you to stay grounded or to, to get that clarity you need? Yeah. And you're right. I'm not starting my day with any sort of meditation, but I am starting it with reading the news. I, that's one of the first things that I do when I get out of bed is read the news. I just want to know what's going on in the world, even if it's global. I, yeah, I want to know what's happening around me. I think knowing what's happening in other countries and what's going on with other people does in a way keep you grounded as well. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you humble, keeps you educated and on top of things. So. That's a one way I love to start it. And even though, yeah, I don't meditate, I do try to hit the gym as much as possible. I try to set going to the gym like going to a meeting. Yeah, I have to be there, right? It's kind of the same thing. So I try to do that as much as possible. But yeah, you know, mentioned being a mom. Uh, I do try to give that time to my son too. So one of my routines is in the morning, my son and I have breakfast together before he's off to daycare. And uh, it's really giving him that moment. Mm-hmm. So the phone's away, everything's away, all the electronics are away, and I'm just with him. Such a great way of getting grounded, though, to start your day, being yeah. present. Exactly. So has there been any advice you've gotten or books you've read or, or anything that, that has really stuck with you that you want to share with our listeners today? I'm a really big fan of Dale Carnegie books. Uh, he, he's kind of an ancient writer, but I think what he's preaching is timeless. So one, one of the ones, actually, I have it right behind me right here. It's, it's how, to, how to Make Friends and Influence People. I hope I'm getting the title correctly. But I really love that, those kind of books because it, being an entrepreneur, it's not about you thinking you're so great. I can do whatever. You know, you have to be personable. You have to have these interpersonal skills. You need when you go to these network events. Yeah, you really need to be able to connect with people. And I think there's no business that grows on its own. It's it is a village of people and a village of support that's coming to you. So you really need to be on top of your your game when it comes to you and your your personality and also what you're giving back to the entrepreneur community as well. Mm-hmm. Such great advice because we are here to lift each other up versus compete with each other. Totally. And that's what I love about one of the things I love about being an entrepreneur too is that it is so supportive. I've never felt that in anything I've ever done. Uh, you can go to a pitch competition and there's other founders who are pitching against you, but backstage they're like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So is there anything else you want to share or comment on before we wrap up? Just that, please visit our website, www.campertunity.com. It's a real pleasure to do these kind of interviews where I get to talk about myself and the company. And I love to hear from the public too. So please check us out, help us to grow and take care of yourself. Get into nature. Love it. Well, thank you. And uh, I live on Vancouver Island, so I'll be getting into nature. Awesome. Enjoy that. Thank you.